Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. Dunstan's Episcopal Church here in Shoreline, Washington. We are the church that feeds people, and I'm the Reverend Carola von Rangel, priest associate at St. Dunstan's. We are separated by a pandemic, but unified in our love for God and for our neighbors. I'm going to light a candle here as a sign of the presence of God's love, and I invite you to light a candle or lamp in your own space as a sign of our unity in worship. Actually, you're going to trade. You're going to light the candle. I invite you to stand as we sing our opening
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. One in unison. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life, Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today we are celebrating the seventh Sunday of Easter. And that is also the last Sunday of the Easter season. It's the last Sunday where... As one of our parishioners calls it, we get to just shout out the random alleluias, wherever and whenever we want. It's, but it, I don't think it's really the last Sunday. I think that we can say alleluias pretty much whenever we want, so long as it's not during Lent. Next Sunday, we celebrate the great festival of the church, Pentecost the day of the coming of the Holy Spirit, where we receive power to go do the things that we are sent forth to do. During these seven weeks of Easter, we have heard a message over and over and over again. This morning at the 8 o'clock service, I actually said, what was that message? And Mary won the prize. She knew the message. Love others the way Jesus has loved us. And that has been repeated in both the Gospel of John every week and in the first epistle of John, John 1, 1 John, excuse me, where we have heard, love others as you have been loved. Love others, love your neighbor over and over again. Well, on the seventh Sunday of Easter, I actually want to talk about the feast day of the Ascension instead of the seventh Sunday of Easter. Ascension is, it happened last Thursday. It is the day when Jesus 
rose to be with the Father. And we say it as part of our Nicene Creed. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And it's, again, a major feast day of the church. How many of you have ever been to an Ascension Day service? One, two. No, it's a very rare thing to go to an Ascension Day service because it happens on a Thursday every year. And we just don't go to church on Thursdays generally. But we ought to because it's a major feast day of the church. When I was the rector of the church in Frankfurt, Germany, it was a major feast day among our youth because in much of Europe, Ascension Day is a federal holiday. Can you imagine that? And because it was a Thursday, they said, let's give them Friday off as well. And so it was a four-day holiday. And our youth from the nine parishes all through Europe met every year on Ascension Weekend for a Youth Across Europe event. And they did wonderful, amazing things. One year they went and fed people at the refugee center in Rome. And one year they went to Teze and learned to pray in, with Teze chants and Teze prayers. And one year they went to Paris, and the report came back that basically they went shopping in Paris. But they certainly celebrated ascension, and we too get to celebrate ascension. Two things are part of the, the lessons that we hear on ascension. One is, um, and they both have to do with the last words that Jesus said on earth. One comes from Matthew chapter 28. And in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus gathers with the disciples on a mountain. And he says to the disciples, go therefore and make disciples, teaching them everything I have commanded you and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and know that I am with you always. I always think that the last words that someone says are the words that person wants you to remember. And I think Jesus wanted the disciples to remember. Go, teach, make disciples, baptize, and remember my presence with you. And then in Acts chapter 1, there's the other reading that we hear on Ascension Day. And that reading is Jesus, again, is meeting with disciples, and he is about to be raised, ascended into heaven. And he says, go, make disciples, teach, baptize, but stay here. Stay in Jerusalem first. Don't do this on your own. Stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promised Holy Spirit, and you will receive power to do those things I'm telling you. And so they gather. And we hear today there were only about 120 believers in Jerusalem at that point. That's not very many. And that increased, after they received power, that increased to 5,000 the first week. Don't we wish we could grow the church that quickly? 120 to 5,000, we'd have to build a new building and have whole new ministries and do amazing things. But wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. And that's where we are right now on the seventh Sunday of Easter. We are worshiping the ascended Christ, waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit, Next Sunday, we'll all wear red and be excited about Pentecost and ready to go and do what Jesus has commanded us to do. And what was it that Jesus commanded us to do, Mary? Love one another as he has loved us. 
Love one another as he has loved us. That's that prime directive. I am going to base the rest of my sermon on the gospel according to a comic strip I saw on Facebook this week. It was, it really struck me as a wonderful comic strip. And it was, I had hoped it would be in today's bulletin, but it's not. So I will have to describe. Oh, it is in your bulletin? It's not in my bulletin. What page is it on? How much? Seven. Page seven. Those of you who have a bulletin, please turn. Yeah, it's not on mine. Please turn to your bulletin on page seven. And it's a five window. It's okay. I wrote everything down. Thank you, Bill. And it is an image, for those of you who don't have you, of Jesus and a small group of disciples. And Jesus says, gotta go, dudes. Don't forget what I taught you. And in the second little window, we only see Jesus' feet because he's on his way to ascending. And the disciples say, bye, boss. And Jesus is gone. And then in the third window, the disciples ponder amongst themselves. So what have we learned? Well, pretty much it's love God and love your neighbor. And I like the fourth little window the best. Well, that seems pretty simple. I don't see how we can mess that up. But then, uh uh-oh, here come the theologians. And it's a wonderful picture of Martin Luther and John Calvin and a pope and Francis of Assisi. And they're on their way with their books and their thoughts on what might it mean and what did Jesus really say? just to confuse us. And this starts way before the theologians showed up. Remember, in Jesus' time, someone came to Jesus and said, so who's my neighbor? And Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. And I think that from that time forth, we have been wanting to argue Who is my neighbor? What do they look like? What do they think? What do they believe? What do they do? And what does it mean to love them? Do I really have to love them? Can I just say, God bless you and walk on? Can I just ignore them? Can I make laws that make their life more difficult. There are many ways that we can try to avoid, and as the disciples in my little comic strip here say, really mess things up. God has given us his prime directive. Jesus said for us, didn't he? In the history of art, There are so many images that have been painted of the ascension. And most of them, and the ones I know best are in icons, old Russian and Greek paintings, icons. And in the image, Jesus is on his way up to heaven. And the disciples all gathered around him going like this. And they're looking up into heaven. Where, where's Jesus going? What's going to happen with us? And in Matthew, there's a wonderful little line at that moment of the ascension. Matthew says, some doubted. Some of the disciples were not just doing this, but saying, is he really God? Did he really tell us to do what he told us to do? Are we going to be able to do it? Are we going to be the church? Are we going to be okay? 
All of those questions. Well, this week I saw another wonderful painting of the ascension that I had never seen before. And in it, Jesus is going up to heaven and the disciples are already looking for how they can love one another. They're not focused on the ascended Jesus. They're focused on that prime directive, what we're told to do. And they're going to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. They can't yet start. But they're planning, how can we love one another? Here at St. Dunstan's, our vision is on earth as in heaven. All are welcome, all are fed, and all are loved. We're not called to be a church that says, someday we'll all be in heaven, and then everyone will be okay. We're called to bring the power of God and the love of God into our lives, into our communities, into our neighborhoods, among the people that God has put us with. Amen. Let us make a statement of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed on page 9. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy God, you have called us to follow in the way of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love. Seeking to be true friends of all, we offer our prayers on behalf of the Church and the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Gray, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of the sacred.
pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for birthdays, anniversaries, and other happy events. I ask your prayers for those who travel on land, on water, or in the air. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. your prayers for the departed, for Mary Ellen Balkow. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Guide us in the path of discipleship so that, as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and deeds. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another with distant signs of God's peace. Please or at home I, I am online we are um, doing new things it's quite exciting you'll notice we're still doing old things we're still wearing masks and we're still socially distancing because we want to be good examples and want to keep everyone as safe as possible but we are opening the church office on May 24th Yay! Yes, that, that's a sign of new things to come. And we will continue to have the church open on Sundays for by reservation. Uh, and I, we are at full house, full capacity today, which is very exciting. We have... Um, I want to... Welcome any of you who have never been here before, and I want to welcome um, two special celebrities, two groups of celebrities. One is our own Susanna. Would you stand up? Thank you. Susanna was the star organist on the mighty Flintrop organ on Saturday, on Friday night. And she is listed in the up-and-coming great organists. We think she's already there, not up-and-coming. But congratulations, wonderful. The other person, people I want to welcome, Joan and Kathy have brought uh, family member, nephew, etc., David Bass. And if the three of you would stand up. They are here. Um, I mean, Joan and Kathy we know well, but uh, Joan's brother, Freddie, 
was uh, shot down of, over Romania 78 years ago, and his remains were returned at SeaTac Airport on Friday afternoon. You may have seen it on the news. And um, they and there was an amazing event. And then the last Saturday in um, August, he will be buried in our columbarium. There has been an empty niche for him for many years now. And now, in hope of the resurrection, that will be filled. Right? No, right. Just say yes. yes. <laughs> Excellent. So we are glad to be here and glad to share in this wonderful event with you. You are welcome to donate. Oh, M Madeline, you have an. We don't have a flower uh, dedication today, so the flowers today are in the wrap them, so at the end of the service, if you want to see or if you want to sell it or the whole thing, let us know and we'll just take the paper and wrap them for you. Stay at home. Wonderful. Thank you. And please, uh, you are welcome to donate for the Ministry of St. Dunstan's either here or online or by sending in a donation. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Let Virtual choir singing. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Please stand as you are able.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have made your church one body, even as he is one with you. And you have given us the ministry of your word, the ministry of truth that we might proclaim your glory to the world and bring others into the joy of your everlasting kingdom. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in, to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary and Dunstan 
and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We are going to receive communion now, uh, the bread, the host only. And I ask that you make a large circle and I will bring it to you and that you uh, use hand sanitizer before coming forward and that you also... Um, not uh, that you go back to your seats before consuming the host. Thank you.
now to place bread and wine out in front of you, and we will pray for God's blessing on them. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather together in our separate homes, united in prayer and worship. Be with us in this gathering in Christ, helping us to know that even as we are isolated, we are unified in love. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth, and you have fed us on our way with the bread of life. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your Son. You create the fruit of the vine and refresh us with a cup of blessing. Be with us now in our hunger and thirst for you. Bless these gifts by your Holy Spirit to be for your people a holy meal shared in faith and love. Bless us also that we may be united in love as we worship together in your name. Amen. stand as you are able for our post-communion prayer. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God.